Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the January 2022 Social Studies Paper 2. So we are going to be looking at the option section, right? So this is section B, where you will be asked to choose one out of three questions. So there are three questions, one on communication, one on consumer affairs, and then the next question is on tourism, right? Here you answer only what you are asked. You don't have to write your essays like in English language where there's a thesis, there is a concluding paragraph. No, you just answer each part of the question in a new paragraph. And I always tell my students to indent. All right, first question on consumer fears. No, remember to explain your answers and also give examples where applicable. Good, all right, so first part of the question says, is on communication. It says freedom of the press and regional development. Write an essay on the topic above. In your essay, define the term freedom of the press, state two disadvantages of private ownership of the mass media, explain one reason why the mass media should be privately owned, and finally suggest three actions that the press may take to promote regional development and explain why each action is likely to be successful. All right, so the first part of the question says, um, explain freedom of the press. Freedom of the press is the right of magazines, newspaper, TV stations, radio stations, etc., to report news without being controlled by the government. Explain one, re sorry, state two dis disadvantages of private ownership of the mass media. Two disadvantages of private ownership of the mass media is that the mass media privately owned is usually controlled by money. Because remember that this type of media, right, they depend on money in order to function to pay their bills, pay their staff, right, and provide for security, so on and so forth. So sometimes some of these private media can be bought out because of money. And sometimes they, be, they tend to be more sympathetic to some of their biggest income generators. It is not supposed to be so, but sometimes they are biased towards persons who support their business. Another disadvantage could be um, a lot of the local mass media find it easier to buy into international programs. So not a lot of local programs are shown on these local private owned media stations. So with the influx of so many international forms of, you know, like TV shows, right, talk shows, movies, right, it tends to drown out the local culture because locals are now being exposed by this international culture, which, which tend to have an influence on them. So it drowns out the local culture. Good. Next part of the question says, explain one reason why the mass media should be privately owned. One reason why the mass media should be privately owned is because when this happens, there is freedom to transmit any material within the law, even if that material is critical of government because government don't own or control them. So private media is ready to speak out against any injustices as long as it is within the constraints of the law. Good. Next part says, such as three actions that the press may take to promote regional development and explain why each action is likely to work. So three actions that the press may take to promote regional, sorry, three actions that the press may take to promote regional development and explain why each action is likely to be successful. All right, here is where a lot of students fall down because they will give the action, but they won't justify it. Remember, you know, it's, you get marks for each action and also marks for the justification. So let's look at the question again. It says, such as three actions that the press may take to promote regional development and explain why each action is likely to be successful. All right. One now is radio and television stations are able to or should be able to transmit programs beyond country boundaries and so have the ability to provide for regional links and discussions. This is going to be successful because this promotes regional culture, right? Regional business. 
for example, I can be in Jamaica and see what is happening in Barbados because my local media is also promoting what is happening in Barbados by showing it on the station. Good. Another action is that a news agency or a news organization with journalists based in several countries can also help to promote regional integration. Because for example, TVJ in Jamaica can have somebody stationed in Trinidad and Tobago, right? So they can actually showcase what is happening in regional, in, in, sorry, in Trinidad and Tobago so that we in Jamaica can actually become a part of that. And also we can see the businesses that Trinidad and Tobago are having, and we can also support those businesses. First, if we look local and the product is not available locally, we can go regionally before we go, to, go international, right? So this will give them the ability to provide for regional links and discussions, right? Another thing is, although newspapers and magazines are predominantly produced in a particular country and aim to produce news of direct relevance to that country, they are also able to carry reports of regional issues. So again, this is going to be successful because regional issues will be broadcast to regional people. So persons in the region can be aware not only what is happening in their neck of the woods, but what is happening in other countries that are within the region, right? It's going to help to build regional integration because number one, we are aware. And remember that the CSME fosters free movement of not only goods, but people. So I can be in Jamaica, right? And a vacancy comes up in Barbados say, for a teaching job for social studies. And I see that vacancy being printed in a magazine or a broadcast on other electronic media and I can apply for it. And if I'm qualified and I do the interview, I can go there and participate by gaining, gaining employment there, right? Without restrictions, good? Those are my three. Next, we have the question on consumer affairs, right? Let's just look closely at this question. This question, sorry. Let me bring it up a little bit more so that you can see. All right. So it says, you have been asked to make a presentation to a retired citizens association whose members are eager to conduct their businesses electronically. You have decided to use the following topic as your guide. Electronic transactions, keeping up with the technology. Write the presentation which you will give to members. In your presentation, explain the term electronic transaction. So you can start by looking what the term electronic transaction means because from, you see it, it in quotations, right? You can just type it in Google or you can look in the back of a textbook and find the meaning for that. It doesn't matter where you get the definition from as long as it's from a credible source, I should say. Right? So you can actually look at it and record the definition. So state two types of electronic transactions, outline two sources of information which the members may use to prepare themselves to conduct online transactions, and such as three precautions the members should take when conducting electronic transactions. Suggest how each precaution offers consumer protection in an online environment. So what is electronic transaction now? Electronic transaction is the sale or purchase of goods or services, whether between businesses, households, individuals, governments, and other public or private organizations conducted over computer media networks. That is what electronic transaction is. Then it says state two types of electronic transactions. So electronic transactions include the use of credit cards, debit cards and also ATMs, among others that you can drop in the comment section if you so desire. Good, so it says outline two sources of information which the members may use to prepare themselves to conduct online transactions. So what can members use to prepare themselves to go ahead with their online transactions, right? They can get a brochure from the institution or organization, you know, encouraging them how to actually use the electronic media and actually use it safely, good? They can also get information by word of mouth, somebody who is versed in using or actually doing online transactions, 
right? Can also guide them and help them, you know, give them do's and don'ts, give them little tips of using the online sources to complete their online transactions. There can also be ad campaigns from the companies themselves, or also the government can put out ad campaigns, right? Especially in where in the age of a lot of cyber crimes. So government can take on the initiative and inform the public because there's nothing more powerful than an informed consumer. Good. Next part now says, such as three precautions the member should take when conducting electronic transaction. So three things that they should put in place to protect themselves when they are conducting electronic transactions and also suggest how each precaution offers consumer protection in an online environment. So the precautions that they should take and then how it is going to protect them, all right? One precaution that consumers should take is regular check. Check if the website that they are going to conduct the, the online transaction with is safe. Usually they tell you to look to see if there's a padlock somewhere near the website address. Usually those kinds of websites are generally safe, right? So we should look for phishing, for any kind of scamming to steal your information. So you have to be aware. And with modern technology, you know, if you have an antivirus on your device, it will normally warn you that this website is not so safe. Proceed with caution. Usually when I see it says that the website is not safe, Right, I'm not going to go on it. If this is done, you know, this is going to help to keep you safe as a consumer so that those in the dark cyber world won't steal your information. But another thing that can be, be done is check your account frequently. So if you have online account, that account, sorry, that you use to complete online transactions, check them frequently, right? I have the NCV and Scotia app. And those are things that I check every day, even if I'm not making any transactions. So if there has been a week or a couple of days that I see that I haven't bought anything, I still check my accounts every day because I have a few little dollars in there. So you have to check constantly. This is going to help you to keep you, this is going to help to keep you safe because as God forbid, if anybody steals your information and try to swindle you out of your money, trying to steal your money out of your account, take your identity, right? You can easily pick it up because you will see that transactions were being made with your online account that you did not approve or that you did not do yourself. So you can quickly call your bank, right? To actually stop payments on it and they investigate. And they usually give you, your, give you back your money if they find out that you are not the person behind it. Good. Another thing, another precaution, that people should take when conducting an electronic transaction is do not store your information online, especially on websites that you think are not safe, right? Some websites ask you to store your information. Some people do, so it make transactions easy so they can just one press and the transaction goes. I usually don't do that because if somebody steals your information at the same one press they can use, to actually make their transaction go through. So if you store your information online, you have to be checking your account on a regular basis to identify any fraud or any theft of your information. So I would recommend do not store your information online. Go through the growing pains of putting in your name, your address, the date of birth, your card information. Sometimes I know that can be very tedious and it's very tiring and frustrating, but I like to do it. So if God forbid anybody tries to steal my information to go in my online accounts, they have to have all of that, not just one little person go through, right? So those are three precautions and I actually outline how they will help to protect the consumer. All right, let's look now at the final question in the options section, which is tourism. I usually encourage my students and I tell them, look here, answer the question on tourism because that is usually the easiest question. Even if you are not so knowledgeable, you can always reason out the tourism question. I don't know if that's the same for everybody, but that's for me. This is the easiest topic for the option section. So tourism, the way to economic success for the Caribbean. You have been asked 
to make a presentation on the topic above at a tourism conference. Write the presentation you will make at conference. In your presentation, define the term tourism product. State two features of the Caribbean region that make it attractive to tourists. Explain two ways in which tourism may benefit regional economies. Identify three problems that can hamper the growth of the tourism industry in the Caribbean and suggest a solution to each. Explain why each solution suggested is likely to be successful. As the first part of the presentation says, in your presentation, define the term tourism product. Tourism product is a combination of tangible and intangible elements such as natural, cultural, and man-made resources, attractions, facilities, services, and activities around a specific center of interest, which represents, which represents the nature of the destination, marketing mix, and also the visitor experience. That is what tourism product is. You can always Google this, or you can look in your textbook, right? Let's continue. State two features of the Caribbean region that make it attractive to tourists, right? One of the number one features that makes the Caribbean attractive to tourists is our climate. We have a tropical marine climate. We are located near the equator. So it means that we are warm all year round. And many of our tourists come from countries that are located in the temperate zones when, where they have their season. So when it is winter, it is extremely cold in those places. So a lot of these tourists, come to the region because our climate is warm and cozy. Good. Another feature is that we have beautiful beaches. So the tourists want to come here to enjoy for leisure, pleasure, do their, their little sunbathing, right? Another feature is our attractive, right? Our flora and fauna is so people come to the region to experience that as well. Next part of the question says, explain two ways in which tourism may benefit regional e economies. Tourism may benefit regional e economies because in a lot of the regional countries, tourism is their highest income earner, right? In two ways, tourism provides a lot of employment for regional citizens. With employment, people have an income, a steady income, most of the times, right? And this gives them greater spending power, right? And also gives the government um, direct and indirect taxes that is good for the economy. So it can help the economy to build and to grow stronger and stronger. Another benefit of tourism to regional economies is government revenue. Government gets revenue in two main ways, direct taxation and indirect taxation. And this is used to fund the budgets, right? And also provide security, put in infrastructure, improve services, and in turn people's lives, because you know our taxes also help with providing social service for the less fortunate and also the indigent. Next part now says identify three problems that can hamper the growth of the tourism industry in the Caribbean and suggest a solution to each, right? This is kind of tricky. It's also asking you to justify a solution. So you're going to state what the problem is, then you provide the solution, then you say why your solution is going to be successful. So these the two parts here are asking you to do three things. Identify the problem, come up with a solution, and say why your solution is going to be successful or why is it going to be effective. One problem is safety and security. When people travel, they often feel vulnerable, right? They will want to know that levels of crime or violence in the host country are at acceptable levels and be reassured that they will not be exposed to any threat or risk. So especially a country like in Jamaica, we know that our murder rate is sky high and probably in the top 10 in the whole wide world, right? Per Capita, you have to Google what that is and how they work it out, right? This can be a problem 
that hampers the growth of the tourism industry, right? As people sometimes don't want to come to country where crime is high because they feel like they have a probability for being a victim of crime. What we can do is actually reduce the crime rate. Governments should put plans in place to actually reduce the crime rate, right? Have more policing in tourism areas. So, you know, that people can feel safe when they come to a destination because they actually see the police and the murder rate is, sorry, the crime rate is low. This is going to be successful because if they can be assured that the crime rate is low, right? They see law, um, law officers here and there, everywhere, right? They are going to want to feel safe and want to come back to this destination time and time again because then they are going to see this government has its hand hands on crime right and they can feel safe in that destination another thing that can hamper the development of tourism in the region is lack of modern in infrastructure a modern safe and well-maintained road network is very important for tourism right a host country needs to have modern sanitation arrangements good host countries also need adequate and reliable electrical supply system and modern internet and telecommunication systems. So infrastructure needs to be modern. If not, potential visitors or actual visitors are going to say, no man, this country is too backward. I can't understand. Why can't I book my destination online? Why do I only have to call over phone? Why can't I pay online instead of actually going into an office to pay? Why can't I have good roads to actually drive? And I don't want to go anywhere where I say garbage is piled up all over the place. If rain, if, there, if it barely rains, then the place is flooded out. No, that is going to turn off people. So we have to put modern infrastructure in place to actually improve the growth of the tourist industry. And when facilities are modern, infrastructure is modern, tourists are want to go into Go, 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 going to continue to come because they can feel comfortable and they like what they see. They make their experience a bit more comfortable, a bit more satisfying, a bit more fun, and a bit more easy to traverse. Understand? Next problem is airports and seaports. Air and seaports need to be modern and capable of handling modern aircrafts and ships as well as accommodating large number of passengers in the Caribbean. You see, in order to fix this problem, steps must be taken to upgrade airports and seaport facilities so that they can become modern. They become modern, they can move with the times, get in touch with the moving and ever evolving technology. Improvement of the, the seaports, larger cruise ships can actually come in and dock because that's a big tourism business as well. This is going to be successful, you know, because if these things are improved, it means that more tourists are want to going to come to the destination, which means more money for the government and also more employment and investment will be generated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also run over to my other channel on YouTube called Cory Fences and subscribe and watch some videos. All right. If anybody has the 2022 paper, one January paper, you can just hit me up on Instagram at social studies with on Instagram and I'll give you the details how to send me that paper because I have the paper two, but I don't have the paper one. So if you have the paper one, just hit me up and send it to me. Thank you in advance.